sorry about the delay, guys. Uh, technical difficulties. Um, so we'll just go ahead and jump right in. We're running about 15 minutes late here. Uh, I just want to start off quickly with a disclaimer. Uh, first of all, as you probably have already noticed, the presentation will be in English. Uh, my uh, my check is limited to Dobre den va pivo prosim de qui. That's it. Uh, so uh, don't speak English, my apologies. Um, second disclaimer, um, as you know, Konami, our publisher on Silent Hill, is particularly uh, controlling about what information we release to the public. And they have a very strict marketing plan. So uh, if you came here, especially if you're a journalist, and you came here expecting brand new footage of Silent Hill, new screenshots, uh, any information other than what you've seen in the press already, I, I'm, a, I'm afraid the, the snipers will shoot me as soon as I try to tell you anything. Uh, so I will not be offended if you choose to go see something else now, if that's what you were expecting to see. Uh, instead, we're just going to do a, a somewhat uh, academic discussion of the horror game genre, uh, and then uh, I'll tell you some of the, the challenges we faced with the new Silent Hill uh, in somewhat vague terms sometimes. So uh, we're going to be talking about just a, a brief history of the horror genre, the challenges and survive of the survival horror genre. Uh, we're going to talk about the unique challenges with uh, Silent Hill. Uh, then we're going to do a little uh, a walk you through basically what we've done to create our monsters. Uh, and then I want to open it up to everybody out there uh, to ask questions. And uh, those that I am able to answer, I'll, I'd be happy to do it for you. Um, so just very quickly, I'm sure if you if you uh, seen like the Russian attack presentation, you already know some of this, so forgive me for, for repeating. Uh, I work for uh, Vatra Games. Uh, Vatra was formed in uh, Brno in the Czech Republic here uh, in 2008. Um, they are, the team is mostly comprised formerly of uh, Illusion Softworks and 2K Czech uh, uh, developers. They are a uh, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 development house with uh, approximately, uh, give or take, 50 developers uh, both here in Brno as well as uh, over in the United States uh, and in the United Kingdom. Um, we are part of the Kuju Entertainment uh, Group since 2009, and that includes other developers like uh, Zoe Mode, uh, Double Six, uh, uh, Double Helix, yeah, sorry. Um, about me, um, I've got 15 years of game dev experience. Um, I've uh, been a game designer, a writer, and a uh, director, creative director. I got my start at uh, Paradox Development, which eventually became Midway Los Angeles. Um, if my accent doesn't give it away, I am actually from Los Angeles, California. Um, I then went to uh, Edinburgh, Scotland to be a lead designer and then creative director at Biz Entertainment. Returned back to the United States to work at Pandemic. Um, and then I formed my own company called Alchemic Productions. Uh, and then uh, just last year I joined Vatra Games. Uh, as far as the horror genre specifically is uh, concerned, I've, uh, I've had a lot of experience in this realm. Uh, I've done a number of games in this genre. My first horror game, um, technically speaking, would be Thrill Kill. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that game. Uh, it was a uh, fighting game on the PlayStation 1 that was a, uh, a horror-themed uh, fighter. Uh, it was very violent, uh, a bit uh, adult and uh, Electronic Arts decided that uh, it should not be released to the public because it would do irreparable damage. Uh, so they shelved that one. Um, I also worked on uh, Evil Dead, what I'd like to consider the, the, the only sort of good Evil Dead game, uh, Fistful of Boomstick. I was the um, script doctor on Alone in the Dark. I was not a designer, but I was a, a, a writer on the Alone in the Dark that came out a couple years ago. Uh, and then Clive Barker's Jericho, the horror first-person shooter, I was the uh, director, uh, writer, and, and uh, co-creator along with Clyde uh, on that property. So, uh, in other words, this is this is sort of the base of experience that I came to Botcher with when they brought me on to uh, help them take Silent Hill to the next level. So, before we talk about horror games, we need to look at, uh, just very quickly, what is horror? What is the horror genre about? So, we'll look at the, uh, the collegiate dictionary definition first. It just says that it's an intense feeling of fear, shock, or disgust. And it's a literary or film genre concerned with arousing exactly those feelings. So that's a pretty broad definition, and it's a pretty broad category of fiction. Uh, because basically, any work that then produces those emotions in you, fear, 
dread, shock, disgust, uh, can technically be categorized as horror. And that runs a really wide gamut. That's, that's everything from the, the supernatural, stuff like uh, The Exorcist, The Haunting of Hill House, Dracula, Frankenstein, uh, to technically you could say it's things like The Terminator, um, which is you know, considered typically science fiction, but it, it still brings up those same feelings. Um, all the slasher, uh, or what we call torture porn movies, right? Like Saw, uh, Hostel. Uh, that's still horror, even though there's nothing supernatural whatsoever about those uh, those baddies. Um, in fact, I'd say things like uh, The Road from Cormac McCarthy. Nothing uh, horror about, it, nothing supernatural, but still an absolutely horrifying story. Um, so it's a really wide open genre. The the horror genre is unique, though, from things like science fiction, westerns, actions, etc., in that um, the label that we assign to it, when we call it the horror genre, the label is actually describing the very emotion that it's producing. So it's, it's been around for a long time, starting with, uh, I guess if you want to go back just to the ancient world, you can go to the Bible with things like Leviathan, Behemoth, uh, Satan, Beelzebub. Uh, those are sort of the original monsters. Uh, you go into uh, Beowulf and Grendel. Um, 1816 at the Via Diodati, you had the birth of both Frankenstein with Mary Shelley, and uh, Dracula with Dr. Polidori's vampire story born on the same night. Um, as soon as we started making films, you know, taking it from uh, the literary and the, uh, the oral tradition, and we started making films that were horror stories, um, some of the earliest uh, horror films that came out were interpretations of Dracula with Nosferatu and Frankenstein. Um, into the uh, 40s and 50s with the universal horror monsters, the British uh, Hammer uh, films, uh, then once we start getting more into a contemporary horror, we have things like Kubrick's The Shining, uh, William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist, uh, American Werewolf in London. The 80s, uh, Hollywood kind of considers the 80s as like the heyday of, of horror. That was like the boom time for horror because it became extremely commercially successful. Prior to the 80s, um, horror was still very much a niche uh, genre for film. But uh, thanks to things like Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, and then later uh, films like Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer, um, those became extremely popular, especially with younger film uh, goers, uh, and it became a, a very big business. Uh, then horror movies in like the late 90s and, and the early part of, uh, of this decade, um, of the last decade, started uh, maturing a little bit. So then you started getting things like uh, The Sixth Sense and The Ring, which of course had its origins with the Japanese uh, Mingu. So horror has evolved. Uh, it's been evolving in human culture for the last several thousand years. Um, speaking as, as far as horror games are concerned, um, when people outside of the games industry find out that, I, that I'm a game designer or that I write for games, people that have nothing, that have, don't even play video games, uh, when they ask me, so what is it that you do? What does that job do? Are you a programmer? Are you an artist? What is that? Um, I, I explain it that game design is about uh, manipulating players' behaviors and conducting their emotions. Conducting it uh, by way of like a, a, a musical conductor. You conduct some orchestra. That's what game designers and writers in the game industry do. We're, we're conducting people's emotional responses. Uh, now horror, specifically, is about really extreme emotions. So. Uh, if you're trying to design a horror game, especially a, a survival horror game, uh, as that designer, you are trying to conduct uh, some extremely uh, strong emotions. So it's kind of like extreme game design, and with it comes really extreme uh, game design challenges. Um, so let's look at what, what, do, what exactly do horror games do for our player? Um, the first thing that they do is uh, it immerses us in an overall atmosphere of dread. Okay? Everything about a horror game, typically, from the, the first you know, menu screen and the front end, uh, all the way up to you know, the cutscenes and the in-game action, everything about it is usually just dripping with dread. You don't want to see what's around the next corner. You don't want to find out what's making that noise in the next room. Um, a, a really interesting thing about horror games that you don't find in other genres is uh, it intentionally tries to violate our comfort zones. Okay, so um, in science fiction games, you can fight monsters you know, you can, in Halo, you're fighting killer aliens, but Halo never really violates your comfort zone the way a Silent Hill or a Resident Evil does. It doesn't uh, give you what, what in the States we call the, the, the shivers or the heebie-jeebies. You know, you don't, um, you don't feel the hair on the back of your neck stand up when you're playing a Halo. Um, 
what these games do, basically, is they're allowing us to vicariously experience the thrill of being preyed upon. Okay, not just, uh, I'm afraid that this ghost is going to get me, but it's actually, I'm afraid that this thing is going to hunt me down and it's going to kill me. And that, that's everything from demons to ghosts to monsters to killer cyborgs. Now, uh, as game developers, uh, we typically talk about horror games in two really broad categories. So we have the action horror genre, and then we have the survival horror genre. And uh, I think if I were to ask anybody in the audience to define them, we'd all probably come up with a pretty similar list, because uh, there's some pretty clear distinctions. Um, action horror, faster paced game, it's usually about fighting, combat is kind of at the forefront of, of the, uh, the genre. It's really about action. I mean, it's, it's there in the title, action horror. Um, it's very heavily combat. Uh, a really key, the, the two biggest points about it, though, is that the hero, the protagonist, is very much an action hero. You know, he's a Jean McClane type of guy. He's a master sergeant type of guy. Even though he's thrown into a horror setting with the horror environment, blood dripping on the walls, monsters in the next room, the protagonist that the player is taking on is still a badass, typically. Um, and that's really empowering to players. Okay, so you end up with a, an empowered player taking on the role of a kick-ass guy fighting monsters in a, uh, in a horrific situation. Survival horror is, is uh, quite different. So it's a much slower pace. Okay, it's what we talk about when we say flight. Uh, um, in English, there's a saying, fight or flight, which means you're either going to have to stand your ground and fight against the monster, or you're going to run like hell. Survival horror games are usually about the latter, running like hell. Um, they're much more focused on puzzles. And obviously there's, there's always some crossover here. You can get puzzles in action horror games too, but the bulk of the action in, in survival horror is usually about the puzzles. Another key difference is exploration. Um, not just exploration of trying to explore a map, but it's also about trying to explore a character, trying to explore a story. So you'll find that uh, players that really like survival horror games have a much greater um, tolerance for things like reading pages and pages and pages of backstory that they find in the journal. They have a greater tolerance for searching out every tiny corner of a map, trying to see what little thing they might have uh, missed. Um, and that type of exploration gameplay usually requires a slower pacing. As far as the protagonist, the player's role, um, he's usually a survivor protagonist. Okay? He's not an action hero, kick-ass guy. He's usually a normal guy. You know, he's like us. Um, so you can say the survival horror is one of the rare game genres where when you're playing that character, you're usually assuming the role uh, of a character that's much more like yourself as opposed to, you know, Master Chief. It's also very disempowering to the player. And this is one of the biggest key differences between uh, horror, not just action horror and survival horror, but horror games in general. Uh, it's about disempowering the player. So we can look at, you know, there's uh, just some examples really quickly. There's, of course, the Silent Hill series. Uh, Resident Evil is kind of, I, I think technically was the first game to ever be called survival horror, even though the, uh, the series has kind of evolved more into the action side of things. Um, System Shock, talking about the way that horror kind of crosses the lines of certain genres. Some people would categorize this as a science fiction game first, before they call it a horror, but it was ab absolutely a horror game. Uh, the Fatal Frame games, uh, definitely survival horror. Uh, Eternal Darkness, one that we'll talk about a little bit more in more depth, definitely survival horror. Uh, Alone in the Dark, Dead Space, another genre cross.